Hey guys, it's Vicki, and today I'm here to share with you a book haul. Um, I've accumulated some books in the last couple of months, and I've gotten kind of from all different kind of places, so uh, I thought I would share them with you today. So yeah, let's just dive right in. So the first little stack that I have, I picked up at a library sale. Um, this was probably back in... June I would say. Um, I was out to lunch with one of my best friends and she was like yeah so there's a library like down the road and they're having a library sale would you want to go and I was like girl do you know who you're talking to? <laughs> yes please so we went and it was the last day of the sale so things were a little picked over but I did pick up a couple of books. Um, the first one that I picked up is Bellwether Rhapsody by Kate Roculia. Um, this is one that I had on my TBR for a little bit, and it is a, I believe it's like a mystery, um, surrounding this hotel where 15 years prior to this, the story in this book, a murder-suicide took place in one of the rooms. So now we're like 15 years later, and there is a, I believe it's like a school band or something is there for something, and they're staying in this hotel, and the student that is staying in that particular room where this murder-suicide took place in the past disappears. Uh, so yeah, this sounds like kind of a cool just like murder mystery, maybe kind of a little bit supernatural maybe because maybe we're dealing with a ghost here. I don't know. But yeah, it just sounds really cool. The next book that I picked up at the library sale is Snowflower and the Secret Fan by Lisa C. This is a book that I've seen kind of everywhere and I've heard a lot of people talk about. So when I'm in the mood for a historical fiction, I think that this book is going to fit the bill quite nicely. Um, it is about a young girl um, in Japan, or in Japan, in China, <laughs> who um, she somehow starts communicating with this older woman. Um, what is she called? A, um, I'm going to say this wrong. Lao, Lao Tong? I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Um, and they start to like write letters back and forth to each other on these fans. And it's basically just them kind of communicating in this kind of secretive way and it deals with a lot of the Chinese customs of the I believe this is the 19th century yeah 19th century China so it talks about like foot binding and things like that and yeah I've heard this is a good historical fiction so I figured I'd pick it up plus the cover is just you know I think the cover is pretty so so yeah there's that the next one I picked up at the sale I totally only picked up because my friend that I was with insisted that I buy it it's a book that I have seen everywhere and lots of people have talked about but it's one that I just never really thought I would want to read but she's like no you just have to read it just read it for me so I'm like all right I'll do it for you and that book is The Shack by William Paul Young um honestly the reason I've never really picked this up was because I thought I had uh, I thought I heard that it had a lot of like religious over undertones and I'm just not really into that kind of thing but she said that it was really good and that I had to read it and it's about a guy whose daughter went missing and then I think she was found um, murdered in this shack and years later he goes back to the shack and meets some um, some angels or something I don't really know <laughs> but um, yeah I, like I said I got this because my friend insisted and um, typically we share the same interests in books so I'm going to give it a shot for her and I'll let you guys know how that goes. And then the last two books I picked up from the sale are both non-fictions. The first one is one that I've actually already read, but when I saw it at the sale um, and that it was in such good condition, I decided I wanted it because I just want it on my shelves. Um, maybe not something I would necessarily reread, but just to maybe reference um, later on. But that book is An Unfinished Life. Um, John F. Kennedy, 1917 to 1963 by Robert Dalek. Um, this is basically a biography of JFK. Um, and I read this a few years back uh, from the library and I really enjoyed it. It was, it was a really good biography. Um, I haven't read a ton of books on JFK, but I would say if you're looking for one, you want to learn more about his life, this is definitely a good book. So, um, when I saw it at the sale and it was in such good condition, I was like, you know what, I'm going to buy it because it's one that, like I said, I could reference later or, you know, I, I start thinking down the road to like maybe when my kids are old enough and they maybe have to do a report on someone and they have to do JFK, they could reference this book or something like that. So yeah, it's just a good one to have on the shelves. Um, 
good piece of, you know, American history. And then the last book that I picked up at the sale is another nonfiction. Um, and that book is The Perfect Storm, A True Story of Men Against the Sea by Sebastian Junger. And this is about um, a small, I believe it was a fishing, a commercial fishing boat, I believe, that got caught in a really bad um, storm um, off the, where was it? It's a nor'easter. I'm not sure exactly where it happened, um, but somewhere on the east coast of the United States. Um, and I know that they made a movie out of this, but I have not seen the movie, and I want to. Um, but I want to read the book first. So I love stories like this, stories that are true stories about survival and things like that. So I think I'm really going to like this one. And then the next couple of books that I got um, were from Book Outlet. Um, I had to place an order, you know. And the first one I got is actually one that I've already read and one that I'm already going to be unhauling and that is Where'd You Go Bernadette by Maria Semple. I bought this to read with my book club. I read it last month and I didn't really care for it so it's it was here and now it's going to be gone. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> and then the next one that I got is one that I plan to read this winter because it totally I think is a winter book. That is The Terror by Dan Simmons. Um, last year I read Summer of Night by Dan Simmons and I absolutely loved it. It was one of my favorite books of the year. And this one I've heard is also amazing. Um, and it takes place in the um, it takes place in the 1800s and it is about um, this ship that is trying to get through the Arctic Passage and they get stuck. And then there's like a creature out there that is attacking them and killing them or something. I don't know. It sounds creepy um, and a perfect book to read in the winter time, so that's why I'm going to save it for winter. And then the next book that I got from Book Outlet is one that I got because um, somebody commented on a video, like one of my wrap-ups or something, telling me that they were reading this book and that they absolutely loved it and that I should read it. So when I saw it on Book Outlet, I picked it up, and that book is Boy's Life by Robert McCammon. And um, it's kind of a chunkier book. Um, but I believe it's kind of just like a coming of age story um, about a kid that was growing up in Alabama. I don't really know much more about it. I don't know if it has a supernatural twist to it um, or not. Because I think it has something to do with him and his dad witness something or are part of something that like kind of um, traumatizes them in a way. I don't know if they witnessed some sort of accident or what it is. So I don't know if there's a supernatural twist, but I don't care because I've heard this book's amazing. Because actually, recently, um, Carol at Carol Marie Reads was reading this, and she wasn't even that far into it and was already like, yeah, I think it's a five star. So that makes me feel super confident that I'm going to love this book. And then the last book, Outlet book, I picked up was Boy Erased, A Memoir of Identity, Faith, and Family by Gerard Conley. This is one that was recently made into a movie, um, and I want to read the book first, of course, before I see the movie. Um, it's about, um, it's a memoir about this guy, uh, Gerard, is that how you say it? Gerard? It's just spelled, spelled with an A, so I don't know. I'm going to assume it's Gerard. Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, he grew up in a Southern, is it Southern Baptist? Um, in Arkansas, Southern Baptist uh, community. His father is a pastor, and religion is a very big part of his life. And he realizes pretty early that he is gay. When he comes out to his family, they send him to one of those, like, conversion camps where they try to convert you to not being gay, which is just silly to me. But, um, but apparently, you know, this was sounds like it's a pretty traumatic thing to happen to you. Um, and so I've heard this book is really compelling, heartbreaking. Um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading it. The next two books that I bought, um, I just bought, I think, off of Amazon um, because I just wanted to get them and they were a good price. So I picked up Paper Girls, Volume 2 and 3 by Brian K. Vaughn um, because I read the first one back in April and liked it. I'm still... Not 100%. I think it was a three star, but I want to continue with the series because I've been told that the series gets better and better. So yeah, I want to try to read these um, in the next few months or so uh, and see if that is the case for me. Um, I figure by vol the end of volume three, if I'm still not feeling it, then I won't continue, but we'll see how it goes. 
And then I got a book sent to me for review um, by, I believe it was Book Publicity Services, um, if I remember correctly. They reached out and asked me if I would like to read this book, and I said yes. It is an autobiography called The Blood on My Hands by Shannon O'Leary. And this is Shannon O'Leary's um, story about growing up in Australia in the 60s and 70s in a seemingly um, wholesome Catholic family but behind closed doors her father was very abusive and she even um, says in this book that he committed murder but that people within her family um, her immediate family basically covered it up and um, covered for him so I'm really interested to read this just to kind of see what that's all about um, it sounds like it's gonna be a tough read a dark read but one that I still want to check out and then I got a book from uh, my grandma. She um, tends to pick up books from like the library and stuff like that, library sales. And if it's something that she thinks I might like, she passes it on to me. So she passed on uh, The Returned by Jason Mott. Um, this one is about, this was on my TBR for a while and I think I took it off. And now I kind of want to read it again. But it's about this kind of phenomenon where um, these children that have died I don't know if it's just children or if it's like all age kind of people, they come back one day from the dead and they come back exactly the age that they were. So like for example, um, in the blurb here, it talks about this uh, couple that their son died back in the 60s when he was like eight years old or something. Um, and he comes back 40 years later, 40, 50 years later, but he's still like eight years old. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of interesting. Um, she said that she liked it and she thought that I would like it, so I'm gonna give it a shot. And then the next two books were books that I picked up during um, the reading rush. If you guys saw um, my vlog, I went to Meyer, which is a local like grocery store um, chain where I live, and I always go through the book section. And I picked up two books um, because they looked appealing to me. The first one is one that I've actually already read, but was a five star read, and I really wanted it for my shelves because I really want to reread it someday. And that book is Stay With Me by Ayubami Adebayo. Um, this is about um, a woman, uh, a woman and her husband. I can't remember where. Where did this take place? Oh my gosh, I totally. Was it Nigeria? I think it's Nigeria. I can't remember. Um, and they are having trouble conceiving. And so in their culture, um, when that happens, the husband can take a second wife so that he can have children. And so they're kind of dealing with that. Because when they got married, they had kind of always said that they weren't going to do that custom no matter what. They were not, he was never going to take another wife. And now they're kind of in this predicament. So um, it was, this was a fantastic book. I loved this book when I read it. It was one of my favorite books, I believe, of 2017. Um, and one that I definitely want to revisit sometime. So I saw it for pretty cheap at Meyer. <laughs> it was in the clearance section. So I went ahead and picked it up. And then the other book that I got from Meyer is this beautiful beautiful edition of Pan's Labyrinth, The Labyrinth of the Fawn by Guillermo del Toro and Cornelia Funk. Um, this is basically a novelization. I'm just showing the cover because oh my god it's so beautiful. Um, this is a novelization of the film Pan's Labyrinth which I love that movie so much. Um, it's so like magical and heartbreaking and it's like a fairy tale but a dark fairy tale and it's visually stunning. Everything about that movie was just amazing. The ending, my I had my head was spinning. I, it really had me thinking. I just love it. And this book is beautiful. Um, it has these beautiful like illustrations in the margins, and then throughout, um, I think at the beginning of every chapter or so, there's um, illustrations as well. And so it just looks like, ah, oh, I just can't wait to revisit this story in, like, novel format because, like I said, the movie was just so cool. And, um, yeah, I saw this at Meyer. It was the only copy there, and I decided that I had to have it. And then, oh, my gosh, I just took the, um, I just took the, uh, dust jacket off for the first time. And it is also illustrated. Oh, my gosh. That's so cool. Yeah, this book's amazing. I, I couldn't not buy this book if nothing else, because it is absolutely gorgeous. And then the last two books that I got, um, my husband and I, 
and the kids. <laughs> uh, like a week or two ago, we had like a family day and we popped into Second and Charles. And um, I picked up a book and he picked up a book, but I thought I would share the book that he picked up also because um, it's one that I might try to read sometime. But first let me tell you the book that I picked up. <laughs> I picked up The Forgotten Garden by Kate Morton. This is one of hers that I have not read. Um, I have a couple of her other books still unread on my shelves. I believe I have The Lake House and The House at Riverton. So, but I've read two of her books. I know I like her, so I feel comfortable having all these unread books by her on my shelves. Um, this one it has to something, it, it's a typical Kate Morton story. It has to do with a girl um, who was abandoned on a ship in Australia, like, back in the early 1900s, and she is taken in by, I believe, the captain of the ship and his wife or something, and they raise her, and then they eventually tell her that, you know, she's not really their child, and blah, blah, blah. So then she kind of goes on this quest to figure out where she comes from and who she is and stuff. And it goes back and forth in time, because then it jumps forward to the future, or to the present, where she's, like, an old lady, um... And that's all I really know. But I know a lot of people say that this is like one of their favorites of hers. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of excited to see what this one's all about. And then the last book that uh, my husband picked up at Second and Charles, um, that like I said, it's definitely an Austin book. He, I'm not shocked at all that he wanted to get this. Um, and like I said, I want to give it a shot eventually, maybe. Maybe I'll try the audiobook, because I just don't know if this one will hold my attention. But that book is Cosmos by Carl Sagan. It sounds cool, but also intimidating. Like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So maybe I'll have him read it first, and then he'll tell me if he thinks I would like it. But then again, he reads so rarely that I don't know when he's actually going to pick this up. So I don't know. You guys let me know. Have any of you guys read Cosmos? Is it something I should pick up? Or should I try the audiobook? Usually with science-y, real hard sciences like this, um, I usually have to do the audio. So we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, this sounds like a cool book. All right, guys, so those are all the books I have accumulated in the last couple of months. I've been a little bit busy with the book buying. Um, I don't know. I just get into these, like, spurts where I want to buy a bunch of books, and then I go through periods, like, months where I'm, like, I buy nothing. So, I don't know. This, this last couple months has been one of those where I just want to buy, buy, buy. So anyways, if any of you guys have read any of these books, please let me know what you guys thought of them. Which ones do you think I should prioritize and maybe put at the top of my TBR? Um, like I said, a couple of them I already kind of have planned to read, um, in the next, like, couple of months. But if there are any that you think really, like, stuck out, uh, that I should read soon, please let me know. But other than that, that's all I have for today, guys. So I hope that you enjoyed this haul, and I hope you're having a great week, and I will talk with you very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.